Good morning. Happy Wednesday. So let me know if you can hear and see me. Just comment below. Uh, let me know how you're doing this Wednesday. Um, so let me know where you're watching from, how, thing, how things are going this week. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about how to strengthen your intuition using the yoga practice. It's going to be shorter today only because tomorrow I'm teaching the free masterclass, uh, Yoga for the Entrepreneur. So I'm going to be going over tips on how to reduce soreness, how to reduce stress, boost your energy. Also, you can get more done, get more results in your business. So even if you aren't an entrepreneur, but you have an entrepreneur mindset, then this class is going to be for you. I know some of you take on the work of your company like your own. So this is definitely for you. Essentially, if you're trying to create results in the work that you do in your business, in your job day to day, but you feel held back because, for example, you're trying to sit at the computer and type out an email and your low back is just bugging you. And so it completely pulls you from your focus from your or you don't feel so creative because you're lacking energy then this is then this class will be for you i'm going over specific tips on um, these three areas stress energy and body aches and pains um, it's a lot to go over in one hour but it all comes together through one mean and i'll uh, hold you in suspense for what exactly that is uh, tomorrow. So I'll drop the link in the comments and you can get signed up for that free masterclass. And then we're going to go right to today's topic, which is strengthening your intuition using yoga. So comment below if you've kind of had a nagging suggestion in the background, or maybe at some type in some time in your life, you felt like, huh, I could really have better trust with the messages that my body sends me, then comment below. I know for myself, um, I get these little nudges on or glimpses of something in the background, day to day, moment to moment. And <clears throat> this could be the next step for my health, right? Uh, what yoga class or what workout to do on a given day that really fuels my body or replenishes my system, right? Um, and that, that choice, that decision should be based upon my intuition, the guidance that my body gives me day to day. However, Sometimes there is a lack of confidence or a lack of trust in your decision that you're making the right decision, you're going down the right path to get you the results that you want. Or in your business, this is also true, right? Sometimes we think business is so black or white uh, or very uh, objective number oriented, which it should be, right? Because that's how you're going to measure um, if what you're doing is working, right? That's part of being an entrepreneur is this trial and error. You try something out, you test it, and then you look at the numbers, is this working or not? And so sometimes it takes that intuition out of the equation. However, to get the creativity, to really define yourself, your message, um, be authentic to your brand, to what you want to offer, um, the services that you're offering, um, your clients, your employees, all that, it comes from this inner knowing of trusting your purpose, your dharma. This is going to be a whole other talk um, this week on the podcast. I'm actually recording this, so it'll come live next week. But, um, and actually, uh, Marcella, uh, Sullivan and I, um, we talked about this on the podcast podcast this week. I'll drop a link in there in the um, in the comments. But we went over how knowing your dharma, your purpose, can really influence the success that you have in your health. For example, I experienced this myself personally when I had a surgery. In I had a few surgeries in my early twenties, and. At the time, I was really identifying myself as a Division One diver, 
And um, I couldn't dive anymore because of my surgeries. And so essentially at that time, because I didn't really know me, I didn't really um, trust my intuition, who I was, I was in a very dark place and I felt very lost. And um, all the pain that I had from my surgeries um, was very heightened at the time. And I, I, I felt very stuck. And what really helped to get me out of this place was yoga. For example, I, I stumbled into my very first yoga class in 2000, 2001. And the teacher had such a strong message of hope. And it really uh, helped me to expand my mind what was possible for me and knowing that the true essence of me wasn't my identity as a diver. So if you identify yourself completely as um, maybe your, through your business, for example, or through your work as a mom, and then you're not able to be that person, just know that that isn't the true essence of you, right? This um, where you're putting your label, your identification on. It's really so much more. So through this process of um, identifying my purpose, my dharma, beginning to trust my intuition more, then <clears throat> I created more hope. I was able to create more resiliency in my house. And essentially, that's how this business came about many years later. So today, specifically, what can you do in your yoga practice to strengthen this intuition? So number one, again, it comes back to journaling. And this is the more of the philosophical sense of yoga, not the practice of yoga. But if you're feeling nudges or you have some glimpses, some messages that are coming throughout your day, then one thing to do is to write them down. And then you can observe your life and do those nudges do those suggestions, do they come true, right? You might be um, having the ability to predict something based upon a strong urge or feeling. For example, when I was renting my commercial office space in Encinitas here, um, towards the end of my lease, I was getting strong urges, strong feelings, strong messages that I needed to move my business back home. And it didn't make much sense because my business was really succeeding. It was really thriving in this office space. But I was just getting these strong messages. You should move back home, um, spend more time with family. Your business will really thrive there. So despite, you know, on paper, what seemed to be going well, I actually built this she shed <laughs> and I moved my business back home. And when she known it, Two, two months later, Corona came, COVID. So I was already set up in my business with less overhead. Now, it's not that I predicted COVID at all. Um, I just had trusted some strong messages and signals. And it might not even be that my intuition even knew that COVID was coming. It's just that I, I trusted this um, sensations that were in my body or these strong messages that kept coming up day after day that were pointing me down this path. And I really set myself up for better success this year in 2020 because I followed those messages. So that's one thing to do is just start to journal and write down the thoughts, the messages, the feelings that are coming up in your body, and then start to take notice if that's actually happening in life or how that might be related to your life because it'll really deepen it and um, that trust with yourself and the messages that are coming up when you can see see them happen first and then experience the the, the consequence or the actual happening in real life. Now, in the practice, one way to really begin to deepen that trust, that intuition uh, with your body, which is very helpful for healing um, like low back soreness, any type of injury, neck injury, shoulder injury, um, and also uh, prevent injuries, is to learn how to interpret the messages that your body gives you during a practice, because it's if you break it down, it's kind of an esoteric thing. It's definitely not a black or white numbers um, driven objective 
viewpoint, just like uh, viewing the KPIs for your business, for example. So one way that you can do is take, <clears throat> this is your homework for the week, is to take one posture um, and practice it three ways. So for example, you can take warrior two. Let me see if you can see my mat here. Okay, so you can take warrior two and you can practice it in the traditional sense with the palms towards the ground, right? But what happens in your body? What's the consequence if you flip your palms, for example? How does that feel in your shoulders and in the neck? Or another example is to play around with warrior two and put a block underneath your foot. How does that change the dynamic of the pose in your hip? Maybe the use um, of uh, or stretch of your calf? How does that travel up the chain in your practice? So, um, and then the third way, for example, is you can just listen to your body and um, move your body in a way based upon the message that you get. So that's one example. Another example is, is a twist, for example. A lot of times we do close twists, but if you have osteoporosis or a disc injury, then a super deep forceful close twist, your body might send you signals that mm, that's not so good at this time. However, you don't want to stop twisting completely because then your body kind of freezes and locks. And down the road when you're in life and you go to twist in your car, then you're setting yourself up for more injury, right? So we want to keep the motions in our body despite having injury. The trick is to do that in a pain-free way. So how can you practice trusting your intuition that you're gonna choose the right method for yourself. So for example, a very common posture in yoga is marichasana, right? Where we hook the elbow outside the thigh and then we twist and look over the shoulder. However, again, if you have a disc injury, this might not be so great, especially if you're rounding and sinking into the posture. But what happens if you sit up on a block? How can that change the posture, right? Maybe that lengthens the spine. What happens if you just hug your knee instead and don't look over the shoulder in your body? Or a really wonderful way to twist, and this is especially helpful if you're pregnant, is to do what's called an open twist where the chest stays open and you're twisting not towards the bent knee, but away from the knee. So then when you're pregnant, this leaves ample room for the belly, for example. And if you're having a disc issue, you can use your back arm as leverage so you stay tall in the spine and avoid uh, posterior tilting or that rounded position that puts a lot of pressure on the discs. So this week, I would like you to choose one practice or one pose, um, and it can be in a practice that you do online or maybe you're creating your own therapeutic, therapeutic practice, but play around with different positions in the posture based upon the messages that your body sends you. And then notice the consequence of changing the posture. What happens in your body? Is this better? Is this worse? And begin to trust all these signals, these sensations in your body for better or worse, just as information, right? Stay out of the drama of the head. This is just information finding. So then it leads you to the next step, okay? Um, if you're watching on this, re uh, this on the replay, you can always comment replay. And then I'd love to hear the poses that you guys are choosing and maybe some different variations because that can also spark a little... Um, suggestions for the group itself. So drop your pose that you're practicing and maybe a few different variations um, and that'll help spark some inspiration for the rest of us. And then I'll drop the link for the podcast this week um, 
I'm, I was so honored to bring on Miss Sullivan onto the podcast. I really admire her work and look up to her. She's providing a wealth of research and knowledge for the physical therapy field, integrating yoga, even some of the concepts and practices of Aristotle, uh, which brings the work that we do as healthcare providers to be so much more than just our physical body, um, which leads to longer lasting change, transform transformation and healing. So I'll uh, link that podcast here in the comments and then just uh, let me know your poses and I will see you next week. Okay, bye for now. Oh, and make sure you um, sign up for the free class tomorrow. <laughs> so I'll be doing the free class tomorrow at noon. Uh, little sneak peek for those of you here in the group, there will be a replay. But if you sign up for the class, then make sure that you don't miss that replay. So even if you can't come at that time, sign up so you can get the replay. All righty. And um, you might see a little gift here next week in the group. Okay. Bye for now.